Hello everybody, welcome to Short Shot Archery, Anthony here, and it is time for my review of the Boning Griffin vein. Uh, is this the best vein ever? Well, stick around and find out. So let's first off uh, start this review by laying down a little basis here of you know where we began. Uh, first, you know, it was the unboxing and kind of like meeting uh, boning at the ATA show. Uh, there they gave me some veins to test. They had some just trial ones, exactly the same as the production veins, so there's, there's no difference there. Uh, I then went on to testing them and making an official testing video of the boning griffin veins. Uh, you can check that out if you want a more in-depth look at what I did uh, through the testing. Of course, I'm going to be hitting on a lot of that uh, in this video because I'm using what I've learned in the testing and just all the shooting I've done with those veins from 18 meters, 30 meters, and 70 meters. All of that is being put together in this review and kind of supporting the reasoning for you know why I like or dislike these veins. Um, if you are interested in looking at some of the numbers, I do have them at the Shore Shot Archery website under the Archery Data section. Uh, and then other than that, I would definitely recommend you checking out not only the boning video from the ATA show, where you know somebody from boning talks about the veins, but my testing video for all the uh, information. But now, uh, so now let's get into the the pro side of these veins, the plus. You know what did I see that was very beneficial, and uh, two things. Uh, stuck out pretty well, uh, one more so than the other. Uh, the big one I would say is durability. Uh, these veins definitely have durability. Uh, you, can, you can squish them, you can mash them, you can slap them into each other. Basically as long as they don't get caught on something, they're really not going to tear. So the only real way to damage this vein would be to maybe catch another arrow in the target and catch it just so that it would catch the knock of that arrow, then you would probably rip off this vein. Um, I didn't intentionally try to shoot these through a clicker and I didn't have any uh, you know, mistakes on my part where I did, but unless you have a really sharp clicker, these probably won't get damaged going through your clicker. Of course, I didn't test that because I wasn't going to just intentionally <laughs> shoot through my clicker, it's just not something I'm, I'm used to doing. But overall, they are just very durable even compared to shooting uh, them with other veins because I shot these and I shot them sometimes mixed with other groups of veins from other companies just to see you know how things kind of performed and how uh, you know they worked versus other veins especially at 70 meters. Uh, that is when we come to the second pro of these veins and that there is some crosswind potential they do have an ability to kind of negate the effects of a crosswind. Um, I don't have the best uh, data here because I am shooting in the woods, but I can pretty you know, confidently say that when there was a good gust of wind and I'm intentionally shooting into it and it's blowing left to right, uh, these veins seemed to drift less as long as I made a really good shot. And we could kind of see this in uh, the hair dryer test that I did in the testing video. I know some people kind of knocked it and were like, oh, this isn't that official. But it did give us an idea because these veins don't seem to spin. And that's going to come up in another point further down in this video on a, on a negative point of these veins. But since they don't really spin with that hair dryer blowing on them, well, they don't really spin. <laughs> Uh, or get affected by the wind when they're flying down range because of all the cutouts in them and I guess the overall design of these veins. Uh, the only way we could get further information on this is if I get to the point where I have uh, a very high-end high-speed camera then it would be interesting to try to capture the arrow flight all the way down and see if it gets affected from the exiting of the bow through mid-flight through hitting the target uh, and that would be the only way to, you know, further try to explain, you know, what this vein design is actually doing to arrow performance and just grouping on the target. And now for the cons. Uh, the first one is the price. 
at forty nine ninety nine. They are not a cheap vein by any means. Most of the other veins on the market are coming in at about forty cents a vein, while the Bone and Griffin veins are a dollar twenty five a single vein. That's not all three. That is a lot of money to spend on veins, uh, especially once you see all of these other cons we're going to go through. I just don't think the price is very good compared to the performance that I saw in these veins. Next up for our cons is speed. Now, boning pretty much made it sound like these were supposed to be unbelievably fast veins. Uh, you know, kind of like a bear shaft. So, I took your recommendations and actually tested my bear shafts against the speed of these veins. And I got, drum roll, we got 198.3 feet per second for the Griffin veins, but you knew that from the testing video. And I got 199.61 feet per second for the bear shafts. So the bear shafts are definitely still faster, and the Griffin veins are a little bit slower. So you would say this is pretty close to the speed of a bear shaft, but there is still one vein that we've already tested that's actually faster from a uh, blank bale range than uh, the Griffin veins. Um, interestingly enough though, when you actually expand the distance and you go from that blank bale setting for checking speed to just seeing how they group and you know where the arrows fall at long distance, uh, the Griffin veins actually lose a lot of speed downrange. Now I don't have numbers of their speed, but I do have uh, tons of ends I have shot and some video of those ends and every single time uh, pretty consistently unless there were mistakes made in my shot uh, the griffin veins were always lower than the other veins I was shooting them with uh, therefore they may leave the bow a little bit quicker but they are definitely getting slowed down by like the friction or just their design, creating again more friction, and they're just slowing down the arrow, and therefore they are getting a lower height on the target because all of these were shot with the exact same sight setting, and consistently the Griffin veins were the lowest arrow of the bunch, the lowest vein of the bunch. Now that also leads into uh, you know, the consistency part of it. What I also noticed with uh, the Griffin vein is uh, their unforgivingness. If I shot a great shot, you know, nice and solid, held my bow arm, fantastic release, did everything, you know, to a T, yeah, I put it in the gold with all the other arrows. <laughs> but uh, the moment there was a mistake on my part, you know, maybe not so much a bow arm, but like from the release perspective or you know, something kind of just minor, you know, maybe my hand came out just a little bit. You would see a noticeable result, and it felt like it was amplified compared to other veins. Now, of course, I cannot, you know, make the exact same mistake <laughs> every single time, but I can tell you from shooting thousands of shots with these veins and with other veins mixed in, uh, they were pretty clearly less forgiving than a majority of the other veins on the market. Uh, they just didn't seem to, you know, correct your shot and smooth it out. You know, correct that arrow flight as it's going down there until the other was too late, or in a way, it kind of didn't seem like it happened at all. Uh, again, though, if you shot a good shot, they were definitely on the money. They were definitely in a nice group but you also had to shoot a really fantastic shot every single time. And to be honest, I don't even know if the best archers on the planet, especially in the you know, Olympic recurve division, would really, maybe they are capable of doing it, but I don't think they would even choose to go this route because it's a very you know cut and dry situation. You're off a little bit and you pay for it. Your arrows are definitely not going to be grouping as consistently. They're going to be straying off more into the reds and the and the blue rings or, or worse. And that is compared to the other veins I was shooting where I would make a mistake 
and for some reason I'd somehow be able to like get a, a 7 or an 8 out of it. Sometimes even still be in the 9 or 10 ring and I'm like, there is no way that arrow should have been there. I, I was not worthy of that score. That should have been in the, the blue or wherever else it should have been. But it didn't because it seemed like the veins kind of smoothed out and corrected that shot just a little bit. And they did it faster. Those other veins did it faster than the Griffin veins. So, yes, they're plenty quick enough. But they're not as, you know, wildly fast as Boning was actually claiming they were. And thanks to everybody that left a comment about, hey, you need to, you know, test them against your bear shafts. We did. And, yeah, there's a little difference. And, yeah, there was no way they were ever going to get five feet per second faster than your average vein because my bear shafts just don't fly that fast. So, you know, good point. Thank you for, you know, pointing that out. I really do appreciate it. Uh, the feedback from this community is excellent. Uh, now on to uh, the next con because uh, there, there is a few more still. And that would be they do not shoot well if you only have uh, three veins or less than three veins. <laughs> uh, if you only have two veins, on your arrow, uh, these fly very poorly. I went from shooting, say like, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll get a nice broad range with three veins. I lost one, and I was immediately shooting ones, which is really scary because <laughs> where my target's at, if you miss, you hit rocks and your arrow dies, and yeah, it's game over. So <laughs> they fly very inconsistently when they're missing a vein. Unlike other brands of veins where you can be missing one or have damaged ones, even, yes, I know, you shouldn't be shooting those in tournaments or whatever, but, you know, for practice, I don't know. I don't, I don't usually bother fixing my veins all the time. It's a great way to save money. Um, and I always correct them before I go to the tournament, like a week or so before. So I'm not really worried about that, but <laughs> you can't get away with that with these. You have one damaged or ripped off, then you're done for. Of course, you're probably going to get saved on the durability aspect of them because it, it is very hard to destroy these veins. But if you do, you definitely need to replace that vein that's missing because it could have really bad consequences for your score or for the whole arrow in general, depending on where you're shooting. Another interesting thing I noticed, or we kind of noticed, I was testing these with a friend and uh, he's working on getting another spine size for his X10s. He was shooting a spine that was too heavy. And uh, watching his arrows fly down, it took over half the shot for them to slow down enough for the veins to correct the flight. And they would noticeably jump back into the target. And I know this is probably not the best explanation of it, and I also don't have video because that is unbelievably hard to video. But it just didn't seem like these veins were correcting the arrows' flight uh, you know, really from the start or from the first, I don't know, maybe 30 meters, it took a good 50 meters, or at least halfway down, maybe a little bit more down range. The arrow's already dropping altitude, and then it's finally getting its flight kind of adjusted or smoothed out from the veins. I know putting veins on an arrow doesn't just make your shots magically delicious and in the gold, but it definitely provide stability to your shot because if it didn't, we wouldn't bother putting veins on our arrows. It'd be a waste of time. But they work. But these don't really work. And I don't know if that's because the vein's too small, um, if it's because the cutouts in it are too big, which you know helps it get some crosswind advantages, but it doesn't help it in flight correction advantages and just smoothing out a poor shot. Uh, I'm still kind of up on the air with that. But it's definitely not beneficial from, from what I've seen through my tests. So uh, next up is my suggestions for boning, just for these veins. Um, first one is you need to find a way, like, they need to be cheaper. Because there's no point in buying a $49 vein that has this many, like, cons to its performance. Durability is nice, that's amazing, but the rest of it is either 
just, oh, it's always been that way. Like, you know, speed-wise, it's a little bit slower than the rest of them, but it's basically the same speed. Um, you'll, you'll notice a difference in grouping um, at 70 meters, and you'll, you would definitely have to adjust your sight, but it's not unbelievably sh slow because they're not unbelievably fast. They're just, they're just there. So I don't think the durability or the kind of crosswind advantage really makes up for the price. So the price definitely needs to go down. My recommendation, honestly, would be like $24.99. At least you get closer to the rest of the, the vein pack. Either that and like up the amount of veins you get. You got to make it up somewhere, at least in, a, at least in my opinion. Uh, with that, uh, <laughs> number two would be, please don't call them fast. They're not fast. <laughs> they're not fast at all. Um, they're probably faster than a, you know, full size, no cutout plastic vein, or um, like a like an AAE wave style vein. Not that I, I have not tested those, so I could be totally wrong on on their speed. I, I shot them years ago, and they didn't seem like they were that quick because I kept shooting spin wings. But as a you know, a side note, like they're probably faster. The uh, Griffin veins are probably faster than that type of vein, but they're they're not faster than a, a spin wing or a or jet six or a, a Brady vein. So definitely don't call them fast unless you're going to compare them to, you know, solid, you know, plastic veins. Then then you can get away with saying that. My third suggestion would be a bigger vein, uh, for for just better flight, better overall performance, hopefully. Of course, the bigger the vein gets, the slower it's going to fly because you're using a heavier material than the material made for like a spin wing. So that could have some interesting effects. Of course, I did hear from Boning that they were working on a 2-inch, but it was still in development, but they were releasing these 1-inch ones. So I'm assuming, I'm making an assumption, that there must have been some issues with the performance that they or their magical independent third-party tester that they supposedly have that they didn't say who it was um, is must be saying that they're not that great because they are not on the market yet uh, maybe they're just waiting to roll that out in 2021 but with the Olympics and stuff you thought you would have thought they would have put that out earlier because you'd want your vein if it's that good to be in the Olympic Games and have you know somebody from wherever just shooting it and maybe getting an Olympic medal because that's huge publicity and just just shows you how well you, your vein actually performs. Now the two things I would totally recommend keeping, the, they need to keep their durability because it's a major selling point and they need to you know keep their crosswind advantages because it, it did seem like they had less effect from crosswinds but if you're gonna make those holes smaller maybe that's gonna go away but at the same point in time you may get some more elements of the veins actually stabilizing the arrow faster. So you're going to have to, you know, kind of play with those trade-offs because I don't I don't know if you can get both, honestly. I don't know if you can get great uh, you know, crosswind advantages where your vein really doesn't move or get affected by a crosswind and at the same time have it stabilize really well. I don't know if the two really go hand in hand. And that's, you know, that's something that you're going to have to work on. And uh, finally, I really do think this vein has potential. <laughs> I think it needed more testing, and whoever they have testing it, I don't know, maybe they did do a good job, but I think they needed to send this out to more people to actually test. Um, I would be happy to test further models of this vein for boning, uh, because, you know, I think they have a pretty cool idea. It's a really unique looking vein, and I think it, it really does have potential but not with its current price and current characteristics. It's, they're just, the good ones don't outweigh the bad ones. And uh, I think uh, you know, this video really helps illustrate that and the ones I shot before, especially my testing video. So if Boning does see this, uh, you have an open invitation. If you want to send me veins to test, I'd be happy to check them out. And uh, we can make another video you know, with a review with the you know, maybe Boning Griffin Vein 2.0 or whatever you want to call it and you know have a lot of these things corrected I'd be happy to stand behind that but at this point in time I honestly 
I cannot recommend this to my fellow archers. I just don't think the benefits outweigh the cost. But hey, that's up to you. Uh, it's your money and it's whatever you want to do with your equipment. You can have some really unique looking veins on the line that perform below average. But hey, that's, that's what you want to do. Fine with me because at the end of the day, it's all about enjoying archery and just you know having happy shooting. So with that, I'll have a link to Boning's site. You can check out what they have to say. I'll have links to the videos I mentioned, uh, the one from Boning where I talked to them at the ATA show, and my testing video. Um, other than that, maybe stay tuned. Hopefully they'll you know develop this more, and we'll see where it goes in the next couple of years, I, I would assume. Probably not months. Uh, and other than that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my Patreons for making a lot of this happen. And as always, happy shooting. If you want a short shot t-shirt, they're in the shop.